Hi students, welcome back to the Google Classroom of Plus 2 Economics, Indian Economic Development. How are you children? I hope all of you are fine and safe there at home. Children, today we will start with the third chapter of Indian Economic Development. What is the name of our chapter? Liberalization, Privatization and Globalization and Appraisal. You have studied in the previous chapter that since independence, India followed the mixed economic framework by combining the advantages of the capitalistic economic system with those of the socialistic economic system. The economic strategy India followed from independence till 1990 to 91 helped the country to build a well-diversified industrial sector. Our industrial growth was good. But many countries like South Korea, Singapore, etc. industrialized rapidly. One reason for this fast economic growth was their market-friendly policy. In 1991, India met with an economic crisis relating to its external debt. The government was not able to make repayments on its borrowings from abroad. That means foreign exchange reserves, which we generally maintain to import petroleum and other important items, dropped to levels that were not sufficient for even a fortnight. The crisis was further compounded by rising prices of essential goods. All these led the government to introduce a new set of policy measures which changed the direction of our developmental strategies. In this chapter, we will look at the background of the crisis, measures that the government has adopted and their impact on various sectors of the economy. Children, this is the chapter outline of this third chapter. Okay. Pre-reform scenario or economic scenario in 1991. The need for economic reforms. Roots of the crisis. The new economic policy or economic reforms since 1991. Meaning and its objectives. Components of new economic policy. Measures taken. Then liberalization, privatization, globalization and the impact of LPG policies on the Indian economy. Pre-reform scenario. First point, large-scale investment in public sector and comparatively lesser role of the private sector. Then second point, the economic scenario in the country in year 1991 was thus very much depressing as the economy was on the brink of collapse. So children, now analyze the nature of economic crisis and the need for economic reforms. First point, a continuous and increasing fiscal deficit. A continuous and increasing fiscal deficit. What do you mean by fiscal deficit? Fiscal deficit is a condition when the expenditure of the government exceeds its revenue in a year. Okay, the expenditure. So, in this year, a continuous and increasing expenditure of the government than the revenue during this 1990-91. The fiscal deficit were as high as 8.4% of GDP. So, children, what is GDP? The final value of all goods and services produced within a country during a particular year. High rate of inflation, especially sharp rise in the prices of essential goods. Inflation means sharp rise in the price of essential goods. Okay, in 1991, with annual rate of inflation at 12.1% had reached a peak level of 16.7% in August 1991. Then next one, a high trade deficit and balance of payment crisis. So children, what do you mean by trade deficit? It is an amount by which the cost of a country's imports exceeds its exports. Okay, import exceeds its 
export that means trade deficit then gulf crisis leading to high external debt then poor performance of psus psus means public sector undertakings so children what do you mean by balance of payment BOP balance of payment is also known as BOP. It is a statement which records all the monetary transactions made between the residents of a country and the rest of the world during any given period. Okay, that means balance of payment. So all these are the uh, nature of economic crisis or the need for economic reforms. So children, what is the crisis of 1991? In 1991, petroleum prices rose sharply due to the political disturbances in the Gulf region and India's imports rose sharply. But our remittance from and exports to Gulf countries declined and this led to a severe shortage of foreign exchange. Our foreign exchange reserves fell to less than $1 billion. This was just sufficient to meet only two weeks of import requirements. We came close to defaulting on our international commitments. Poor balance of payments position created fears of currency devaluation. This caused capital flight from the country. Meanwhile, the high fiscal deficit along with the rising petroleum prices led to mounting inflation. Credit trading agencies like Moody's and Standard & Poor downgraded India's credit rating to speculative grade. International banks refused to give loans to India. We had to sell some gold and pledge gold with the Bank of England. To overcome this crisis, we approached the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD popularly known as World Bank, the International Monetary Fund IMF. India received a loan of $7 billion. World Bank and IMF imposed conditionalities on loans. So in short, these are the root of the crisis. Control and subsidies, license, permit control Raj was very bad. And inward looking policies of the government and the burden of foreign debts non-developmental expenditure of the government all these are the root causes for this crisis okay in order to overcome this crisis the government of india approached the world bank and imf international monetary fund they gave the loan to manage the crisis but imposed the conditions that india should liberalize the economy and private sector should be given more freedom to operate. India accepted these conditions and consequently announced NEP, New Economic Policy. Okay, NEP means New Economic Policy. Then what are the main objectives of this NEP? First one, to reduce the rate of inflation in domestic territory. To reduce the rate of inflation. That means sharp rise in the prices of the essentials. Essential goods and commodities. To reduce the rate of inflation in domestic territory. Then second one. To reduce fiscal deficit. To reduce fiscal deficit. Then third one. To improve the balance of payment situation. Okay, BOP situation. Then to encourage foreign capital investment. So they formulate policies to attract the foreign investors, to attract the foreign investment. Then to improve efficiency and productivity of the economy. To put the economy back on the path of sustainable growth with social justice. So these are the main objectives of new economic policy okay children this new economic policy can be classified into two part program okay this is classified into two first one stabilization measures and the second one structural reforms measure what do you mean by stabilization measures stabilization measures are short-term measures intended to correct some of the weakness 
that have developed in the balance of payments and to bring inflation under control. Okay. In short, this means that these stabilization measures means that there was a need to maintain sufficient foreign exchange reserves and keep the rising prices under control. Then what do you mean by structural reforms measures? The structural reforms policies are long term measures. Okay. First one, stabilization measures are short term measures and the structural reform measures are long term measures aimed at improving the efficiency of the economy and increasing its international competitiveness by removing the rigidities in various segments of the Indian economy. Okay, the government initiated a variety of policies which fall under the three heads, which are the three heads, liberalization, privatization and globalization. Okay, these are the three components of new economic policy, which are the liberalization, privatization and globalization. Let us conclude today's session by recollecting all the concepts. Children, what do you mean by the crisis of 1991 or explain the crisis of 1991? What happened during this 1991? Yes. In 1991, petroleum products rose sharply due to the political disturbances in the Gulf region. And what happened? India's imports rose sharply. Then our remittance from and exports to Gulf countries declined. Then it leads to the shortage of foreign exchange. Then what happened? The poor balance of payments position created fears of currency devaluation. Then at the end, the international banks refused to give loans to India. We had to sell some gold and pledge gold with the Bank of England. To overcome this crisis, we approached which bank? IBRD, that means International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and popularly known as World Bank, okay, and the International Monetary Fund, IMF. And India received a loan of $7 billion. World Bank and IMF imposed certain conditionalities on loans. Okay. Then next one, NEP, New Economic Policy. Then government announced a two-part program, which are the stabilization measures and structural reform measures. Then what do you mean by stabilization measures? Stabilization measures are short-term measures and intended to correct some of the weaknesses that have developed in the balance of payments and to bring inflation under control okay and what do you mean by this this means that there was a need to maintain sufficient foreign exchange reserves and keep the rising prices under control then what do you mean by the structural reforms measures yes these are long term policies or long term measures aimed at improving the efficiency of the economy and increasing its international competitiveness by removing the rigidities in various segments of the economy. Okay. Then what are the components of this new economic policy? Liberalization, privatization and globalization. So the government initiated a variety of policies which fall under three heads. Which are the three heads? Once more, okay, liberalization, privatization and globalization. You have to study more about all these three components of NEP, New Economic Policy in the uh, coming classes, okay. So children, please note that the corresponding URL, notes of the lesson and test paper are also attached along with this video. Make use of all these available resources. Study well and attempt the test paper without fail. Thank you.